Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well and living your best life in Jesus Christ. Recently, I had a conversation with our four-year-old Landry from next door that reminded me of something I seem to forget sometimes. You see, it started when Landry messed up. Now, this is not a rare occurrence, mind you. Messing up is so common to him that it is, as Landry puts it, part of my job. So this was not an unusual state of affairs. Any of us who've raised kids know that no matter how hard a child will try to be good, they will mess up, often on purpose, just to check where the boundaries are. That's how they learn. No, it was not unusual that Landry messed up, but it was unusual who had to discipline him. Me. Pop Pop. An admitted pushover who invariably ended up being a complete doormat to him. Pop Pop, who often ran interference for him when he would get in trouble with Nana. Yeah, that same Pop Pop who gives him candy right before dinner. That Pop Pop. I had to put him in time out. Which he did in a flood of tears, leaving me feeling like Jack the Ripper's evil twin. I was as upset as he was, to tell the truth, and waited in another room for the timer to end his punishment, and mine. When the timer went off, I went to the bedroom and sat on the bed and told him his punishment was over. That's when he looked at me with tears in his eyes and asked, Pop Pop, am I still your best buddy? Wow. <laughs> what he was really asking me was, Pop Pop, do you still love me? It reminded me in the rush of emotion that we're all like that. We mess up. Often we let this feeling of failure make us feel unworthy and unloved. But our Father still loves us even when we fail. And He uses those experiences to help us grow in faith and grace and love. Too often we see ourselves as hopeless failures when God sees us as beloved children whom He loves in spite of the many times we mess up. Why do so many of us draw a straight line from our actions to our identity? Why are we so quick to connect dots that aren't there, slap a label on ourselves and believe it to be true? We stumble and we call ourselves clumsy. We forget to pay the bill and we call ourselves stupid. If our home is messed up, we call ourselves pathetic and on and on and on and on. But those aren't the lines God draws. Only Satan, the enemy of the world, draws a line of, from our failures to our worth. Only the enemy wants us to find our identity in what we do or don't do. He whispers in our ear, You can never be good enough. God can't love you. And if we're not careful, we listen. And we doubt that God cares, that God loves us. Even worse, we develop our identity as being hopeless, unworthy of the love of God. God, however, has another identity for us, one that's unchanging and independent of our actions. It's as his chosen and beloved children. In John 1, 12, he says, Yet to all who re did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. God's acceptance of us, and hence our identity, is not defined by our actions. So we will never be a failure when our performance doesn't match our expectations. When we reassign the source of our value and worth to its rightful place, we will be free from the fear of failure or the opinions of others. We will be free from the labels we place on ourselves and free from the shifting sands of our own self-worth. If I have any doubt that God's approval is conditioned on perfect behavior, Romans 5, 6 through 8 tells me the truth. It says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, he died for us. The only thing that matters is what our Heavenly Father thinks about us, and that is unchanging. We can rest knowing that we are safe and secure in God's unconditional love. What Landry wanted to know of his was if his being bad kept me from loving him. And of course it didn't. And neither does my father. It's just the way God loves me. Failure, insecurities, doubts, and all. 
So I told him, of course you're my best buddy. Always. You will always be. Then I hugged him and got us both ice cream. <laughs> I told you I was a pushover. I need to remind myself every day, and so do you, that we are children of the king. That day God was reminding me that my identity rests not in my success, but in Christ's sacrifice. I am safe and secure, resting in the knowledge that no matter what, no matter how I mess up, I am a beloved, redeemed child of God. Always. I hope you make today a terrific day. I want you to remember that I'm here if you need me. And I love you all.